Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to show you how to save bee balm seeds. Um, so bee balm, this was a request from my last video uh, from someone to see how to save bee balm seeds. And this little pile right here is the red bee balm seed I saved this year. So bee balm, Monarda didyma, is a perennial native eastern North America, bloom spring, summer. Um, and this is all the seed I got from it. And this is not a lot of seed, but I've been doing this uh, since about 2014. I've been growing it, and I've been trying to save seed every year, and this is pretty typical for me. So it's hard to get seed from this, which in the making of this video, I really explored the reasons why. So that might be a little interesting here. Now, if we look next to it, we have seed from wild bergamot, which is Monarda fistulosa. And Monarda fistulosa is very closely related, same genus. Uh, blooms a little differently but looks the same and little different conditions but you can see I have no problem getting tons of seed from that one tons of good clean seed and the last pile I'm showing you is actually last year's seed haul from this plant the last Monarda that I grow spotted bee balm Monarda punctata um, I couldn't show you that one uh, because it's blooming right now so I'm showing you what I did last year but in sometime this winter I'll put out a plant profile on this and you can see all the seed collection and seed heads there but yeah, it's blooming right now, so I sacrificed a bloom for this. But um, anyways, it's hard to save seed from red bee balm. It's always been hard for me. I've always had cha uh, a challenge doing so. And I suspect that's why I got the request for the video, is other people are having the same challenge. Um, but uh, So I'll show you what to do. This will be like kind of a two-section within the video. The first part will be how to get it. The second section will be the reasons why it's happening, why I think it's happening, what I've found. Um, but even still, fear not, in a couple of weeks I should have my plant profile on red bee bulb done and in it I will show you another way to propagate this plant, red bee bulb, um, that I have a 100% success rate with. So let's get right into everything and get started. Um, so red bee bulb is a uh, perennial native to eastern North America, spreads by rhizomes. Um, it's beautiful red color, loved by hummingbirds. And really about three, four weeks after blooming, the seed heads are going to form and start to turn brown like you see here. You need to go after them early. You can see the stems on these are still green, but I need to go now because you can see plain as day that there's bird damage on this one already. The birds love to eat red bee balm seeds, more so than the other Monardas I've found. So carefully gather seed heads, making sure that you never tip a seed head on its side or upside down unless it's safely over a bucket or a paper bag or some kind of container. After you do that, you're going to allow your seed heads to dry for about another week in a cool, dry spot, just to let them dry out further. Um, the seeds will tumble out of the seed heads on this when you go to collect them, so that's why you have to be so careful when, when you uh, uh, clip them. But once you're done with that, all you need to do really is tap them into a bucket, or if you have them in a paper bag, you can shake them. Um, it, the seed just tumbles right out, and it does so more easily on red bee balm than other species of Monarda, which, again, at I'll let you know when the seed collection is done and uh, we'll get into why this is happening. But, um, you know, just b basically go through and process them all, put them through a kitchen strainer to get rid of some of the chaff and, uh, you know, see what you get. All right, so that was about 20 seed heads. I don't have much seed. If I tap my paper plate on the angle here, the, the seed will kind of tumble down and roll down. When you feel it, it'll be small and hard. And it's very small seed from here, but if we go in, I've got maybe a dozen seeds from those 20 seed heads. And I've got a bunch of little tiny black ones, which I strongly suspect are seeds that never fully formed, actually. But they're very tiny. You know, they're probably a quarter the size of a fully formed seed. And this shows it a little better. Um, but if you uh, just tap this a little bit, you can see them just rolling around very easily. Um, but anyways, I've got a whole bag of seed heads here, though, because I grow a lot of this plant. And I collected the seed heads, and now I am just going to shake this up for a little bit. Um, I cut some of the footage out here, me getting rid of all the uh, uh, seed heads. You didn't have to see it, but now I'm going to dump what's left of the paper bag onto this plate through the kitchen strainer. And, um, I mean, there is probably 50 seed heads or more in there. And again, the pile I get is quite disappointing. You know, if you watch my last video, you know I like to gather industrial amounts of seed. But anyways... We're going to sift through this though and uh, a couple of times and we're going to examine it to try to find what seed and what's not and separate it out. Um, it doesn't take too long. I'm not that scientific about it. 
uh, when you look at it closely, you can really easily see what is seed and what isn't. And then I just kind of press my thumb on it and start separating them and putting them in a little baggie, which I'll let dry a little further in a cool, dry place just to make sure it's good to go. But I mean, my estimation on this is I got around probably 50 seeds. Um, really not that much. This is the final take, you could say, with the pile of seed heads there. So it's uh, not that exciting. But you can see some large seeds, some small seeds, and a bunch of those little black pieces, which I really think they're unformed seeds. Like the seeds just didn't quite get the job done for some reason. They're small, they're hard, they tumble around the plate just like the seeds do. Um, but anyways, that's my bee balm. Now, we're going to compare this to wild bergamot, Monarda fistulosa. Um, this looks just like bee balm. The blooms are very similar, although they're a little smaller. The seed heads are a little tinier. And um, remember how I told you that uh, you want to take care when you're cutting these off. Um, if I take this seed head and I'm just turning it upside down and knocking it on my hand a little bit, I just shook out eight seeds. That would be a record haul for me on red bee balm. So that's how easy the seeds come out of this one. And it's also an indication of how well they hold in there in comparison to red bee balm. This is, again, is about a month after they bloomed. But I'm carefully cutting the seed heads off, making sure I don't tip them sideways or upside down until they're safely over my little cooler. Um, and since, uh, um, in my experience, I know that this uh, plant will hold seeds way better than red bee balm. I, I'm not going to do any special prep. I'm just going to shake my cooler up a bunch and dump it out and sift it and strain it. Um, I've actually collected seeds for this into like December, January and gotten plenty of seed to grow. So it, it's a very easy one to save seed from, especially when you compare it to its cousin, uh, red bee balm. But remove the seed heads, remove the chaff, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're going to get left with a, a pretty good sized pile of seed. So when we look at this and sift it a few more times, it really made me question what is so different between this plant and red bee balm? Why can I get so much seed from this one? Um, nice, clean, fully formed, totally viable seed and I have such a hard time with the red bee balm. So I started digging into it and so the first thing I wanted to do was kind of uh, uh, to investigate a, the seed head size which we're going to see in a minute but I mean the final haul you know I had way more bee balm seed heads than I did Monarda fistulosa and the spotted bee balm all came from one plant so it's crazy. So anyways, let's talk about why I may have low numbers of seeds. The first one I'm going to say is birds eating the seed. Um, bird predation on this one is pretty bad because if they land on a seed head, they're going to turn it sideways. So while they're trying to eat their seed, they're going to knock a ton out. The next thing is you may not have all the seeds actually form. So you may just have all these little black things that should have been seed and didn't quite form. When those little black things are going to tumble right out of those tubes really easily. Um, and the third thing, and this is the one that I tried to quantify a little bit more, if I pull both of these seed heads up side by side, okay, if I look at them side by side, I can see a huge difference in the tube diameters. So, okay, does that mean the seed's just falling out of the red bee ball more easily? Well, to do that, I'm going to have to take some measurements on the seed itself and the tubes. Now, on the right is red bee balm seed, and you can see some large seeds and a few small seeds and the tube size. On the left is Monarda fistulosa. You see seeds that are basically all the same size and smaller tubes. So me being a geeky kind of guy, I actually have a uh, set of calipers at my disposal. That is the uh, thickness of a Monarda fistulosa seed, about half a millimeter. Um, it's a very tiny seed, but that's what's got to fit up in those tubes. And here's the tubes on the seed head. And I did measure multiple tubes, and they're all coming in right around one millimeter as best I could tell. It's hard to measure that stuff because, you know, you could crush the tube if you actually tried to pinch it. But, okay, so we've got a half a millimeter seed and a one millimeter tube. Got it. Now, if we look at the red bee balm seeds and we start looking at what, you know, look like fully formed healthy seeds to me, and I start measuring those, I can see a big difference in them, which that's kind of puzzling. But, okay, we'll measure some of the small ones and some of the larger ones. When I measure the small ones, they're about 0.6 millimeters thick which is not too different than the Monarda fistulosa, the bergamot. But when I do a bigger one, it's 0.86 millimeters, which, you know, is, I don't know, a little more than 60% bigger. If I look at the tube diameter on the red bee balm, it's 1.6 millimeters. 
Okay, so let's put these numbers together and actually do a little math and figure out what kind of clearances we're talking about on these dried seed heads relative to the seed size. So if the top is what a uh, uh, wild bergamot seed has to fit in the tube, the bottom, I'm going to draw a tube on the left and two seeds on the right, and those are the two seed sizes relative to the tube. And if I just do some math on the tube diameter minus the diameter of the seed, I can get an idea of what clearance I'm dealing with. And I came up with basically, uh, I've got uh, a quarter millimeter clearance on the uh, wild bergamot versus a minimum of uh, 0.37 millimeter clearance on the red bee balm. So that essentially means that according to this, yeah, the red bee balm seed should come tumbling out of the tube way easier than the uh, wild bergamot. So this is most likely the reason why we have trouble gathering seed from this. Um, that's my strong suspicion. All right, conclusions. So we've established that we have a looser fit, or very likely have a looser fit, between the seed and the tube on red bee balm. In addition to that, we have these little specks that I really think is unformed seed. How, now, what is the population in the seed head you know, originally before everything knocks it around? I don't really know that, unfortunately. But if you put those factors together with a bird landing on it or a strong wind, and it makes total sense why you lose so much. And then if we compare to five, six years of experience that I have where I can get tons of seed from wild bergamot and barely any seed from red bee balm, it, you know, we've got some reasons that seem to indicate why we don't get much seed from it, although we do get seed, just not much. Um, and we have the results to back it up with uh, every other Menarda I've gathered seed from versus red bee balm. I, I, I strongly believe that it's the loose fit and these unformed seeds, main things. Um, so anyways, uh, again, I'm going to have a total plant profile on red bee balm here in a couple of weeks, and I will show you that other way to propagate um, this plant. Um, but I did need to tell you about one other thing. This, what I'm having in my hand right there, is a little uh, mesh bag with a drawstring that you can put over a seed head. Well, I have these for saving sunflower seeds, and I thought maybe I'd try one on these. So I put some uh, wild bergamot seed in there and started knocking it around. And if you can see on the plate, there is seed falling through the mesh bag, so that won't work. But I thought if someone watched this video, they might have thought, hey, that's a good idea. And I thought it was. Turns out it's not. It's not going to work. So in the end, what can we do? Um, what's the best way to get our seed? Well, the best one is get the seed heads early, earlier than you normally would want to do it. Um, monitor your plants very closely, and if they are just starting to turn at all, um, go get them. Go cut them off right away. Um, that's really the only thing I can tell you for red bee balm. That and learn how to propagate them through other means than seed, which I'm, I'll be showing you in a couple of weeks. But uh, anyways, uh, we, I do have an article detailing out this process at our website, growupbuilder.com. It will be linked below. Uh, so if you're actually out in the field and want to do this, you don't have to watch a video. You can just pull up a list. But anyways, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this and like to see more of it. Thank you guys very much and have a good day.